Hi everyone, Queen here from the comfort of Saturn's atmosphere. Of course, I am still in the comfort of my kitchen. If this sky looks unfamiliar to you, <laughs> that big ring should be a hint that we're looking at the sky from Saturn. And if you would like to learn more about it, you can go back to my previous video. This video, we will be concentrating more on the view from Jupiter. The view from Saturn is wonderful thanks to those rings, of course. But we're going to pop back to Jupiter, a little bit closer to the Earth, which should give us a slightly better view of the inner planets. The inner planets are Earth, Mercury, Venus and Mars. They're all considered the inner planets, even though they're not all inside of our orbit. They are all rocky planets and they are all inside the orbit of the gas planets. So here we are. The sun is just about to set on Jupiter. We'll speed things up a little bit and we can see already a bunch of moons. Now from Jupiter, Jupiter does have a ring, but it's very, very thin. There is a chance that it is simply not being simulated here in Stellarium, but there is also a very, very good chance that Jupiter's ring won't be visible even from the atmosphere of Jupiter. Because it is so thin and so faint, we don't really see it with telescopes. Now, there's Adrastia moving really the wrong direction compared to what we would expect. Jupiter has a lot of moons, so some of them do have some strange orbital dynamics. But also, Jupiter is rotating very, very quickly, so its nights are quite short. Uh, we can see Saturn there from the perspective of Jupiter. Of course, all of the inner planets are going to appear close to the sun from Jupiter's perspective. So if we look here in morning time, we might just about catch Venus. Doesn't look like we do, so I will get rid of the atmosphere. Of course, if you were floating in Jupiter's upper atmosphere without much gas between you and the stars, this is the view you would get. Uh, the sunrise that gets simulated on these other planets it would really only work for a planet with an Earth-like atmosphere with all of the oxygen and nitrogen that we have. So looking there at the Sun, we can see Earth and Venus and Mars on either side. We can take a slightly closer look. I'll make sure that it's focused on the Sun. There we go. And if we move through time, it should come back up to the middle of the sky or at least close enough. And that little swap point is just as the sun passes its highest point in the sky. And if we start hopping through time here, the moons change very, very quickly. But we can see the planets changing there in the background as well. Mars looks very, very faint. And that's because Mars is smaller than the Earth and it doesn't have an atmosphere. Both Venus and the Earth have an atmosphere which can reflect light from the sun, making them appear much brighter, and Mercury is much, much closer to the sun. So there's a lot more um, sunlight hitting it, and that becomes very obvious here, where we can see Mercury, whereas we can't see Mars, even though Mercury is occasionally further away than Mars, and that it is much, much, much smaller. I say occasionally further away than Mars because Mars can come closer than Mercury, but it can also get further away. So that means on average, Mercury is the closest planet to every other planet. Mercury can only ever be around the sun and the furthest it'll get away from any other planet is the sun plus its orbit. Whereas the furthest the other planets can get is, well, the distance to the sun plus their orbit, which is much, much bigger. We can see a much bigger gap there. Mars is there looking very, very faint and small. So our view from Jupiter's sky, it does give us a fantastic opportunity to see all of those moons. But because we're so far from the sun, it is difficult to observe the other planets. And Jupiter doesn't have that amazing ring like Saturn does. So to get a better view of the moons that we're seeing here, we can see some really big ones there at Europa and Callisto. They're two of the Galilean moons, two of the biggest. We're going to go to the Jupiter Observer and that will give us a view. Here we go. So this is roughly where our view would be. We'll close that and there is Jupiter and we can see its moons. And if we move through time here, we'll see them orbiting around it. Now those are only the Galilean moons, the big ones. If we zoom in a little bit closer, there we go, there's some more moons popping up. And as we move through time, we can see them moving around the planet as well. Now, if I ask Stellarium to show all of the orbits, well, there are quite a lot of moons around Jupiter. I mentioned in the previous video that Saturn has uh, over 100 at last count. Jupiter has a little bit fewer 
as far as we can tell. So the bigger planets in the solar system, they have more gravity, they have a stronger gravitational pull, and that means that they can hold on to more things. So let's see if I can get up the orbits of the moons. There we go, there is some moon orbits. They're not staying up, so I'll need to change that setting again and see if I can get the orbits to stay and show the orbits so that should show more of them yes so we can see loads of concentric rings here as we zoom in on jupiter more moons and more moons the closer we look the more orbits we seem to see and some of the orbits are very close together as we can see there now if i can grab this moon metis hopefully i will be able to click on it wonderful get time to stop there we go time's now stopped and we can see it hopping around the planet and we can see that it's traveling pretty far every single day the moons of jupiter especially the ones that are orbiting closer to the planet they're orbiting it much much faster than our moon is orbiting us the same way that small planets closer to the sun are going to be orbiting uh, much quicker the moons that are further out from the planet take a little bit longer to get around so let's see if i can follow them here so we can see that some of the moons are disappearing as they pass into Jupiter's shadow. Io is certainly moving the fastest, followed by Europa, followed by Ganymede, followed by Callisto, just like the planets in the solar system as they orbit the sun. And if we zoom out even further here, those are more moons. So Jupiter, just like Saturn, as well as having a, a lot of moons that are close to it, some of which large we can see, and some small moons that we can see if we zoom in closer to Jupiter. Jupiter is also surrounded by almost a cloud of smaller moons. And we can see from all of these almost wacky shapes that some of these moons, uh, especially the ones further out, can have quite strange orbits, eccentric orbits, which uh, look a lot more like ellipses. We can see this orbit here is very squashed looking. The more like an ellipse you look, the more eccentric you are if you are an orbit or a uh, spherical shape or circular shape not actually a circle because then it wouldn't be eccentric we're going to go from the jupiter observer to the saturn observer to uh, bookend this journey to the uh, gas giants that we can see uh, uranus and neptune are often included as gas giants but ice giants is also a useful term for those planets and zooming out here we can see there are some orbits further out from the planet as well uh, out over there, I suppose, would be uh, Jupiter, looking a lot more like a cloud. Or is that the sun? Yes, that must be the sun with all of the asteroids orbiting around it as well. So zooming in here, we can see the further out moon Iapetus there, traveling quite slowly. Titan, a little bit faster. And we can see that Titan is nice and big and visible there, but it is closer to Saturn than Hyperion. Hyperion, a little bit smaller, a little bit more difficult to see. We can see the shadow of Saturn's ring there, if you'd like to see that from the planet all you need to do oh not quite sure what happened there don't know what button i pressed to cause it to go that strange <laughs> we'll fix that and get back to looking at saturn there we go my computer is starting to complain uh, having to keep track of all of these lines uh, as we zoom in a little bit here we can see my computer is certainly starting to show its age here struggling with these things but as we can see the rings are getting uh, closer together uh, these orbits not the actual rings of Saturn but these ring like orbits closer together as we get closer to the planet and if I move through time here we should be able to see as they get closer to the planet we can see Rhea there making a nice slow loop around Whereas uh, some of these smaller moons are really zipping around after Saturn. Just like the moons of Jupiter, with so many moons, there are some interesting orbits going on. We can see that Dione and Helene there almost share an orbit, and the same is true for Tethys and Telesto practically sharing an orbit. Some of these moons really do share, and as Tethys will start to catch up to Telesto, Telesto will be ripped ahead by other plat by other moons and their gravity, so we should see them disappearing as they go behind Saturn there. If we continue to take a closer look, we'll see a bunch of very small moons zipping around just outside the rings. These are often called shepherd moons because they shepherd the rings into shape. Uh, moons like Pan, for example, if I can get a closer look here, that is 
in the ring or pretty much in the ring uh, helping to keep clear this little gap that we see so Saturn's rings do have gaps in them. Some of those are maintained by rings close to the planet, but a lot of them are created by moons further out. As moons like Titan pull on Saturn's ring, there is a point where either a piece of dust or rock will settle into an orbit outside where it's getting a little bit of a pull from titan or inside where it's free of that pull uh, these you can get in certain uh, structures so saturn's rings have very very complex dynamics going on the planet all of these moons especially the larger moons like titan they have an effect as well so i hope you enjoyed taking this uh, view of the planets and the solar system from a slightly different perspective we will talk more about the planets uh jupiter and saturn with whole videos dedicated just to them in the months to come but until then i do much uh, i do very much hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please like it and make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel and you can read a little bit about this on queenvenescontent.ie my website so we'll be back to normality and back to earth next time so i hope you'll join me then